So before we go to more complex iterative methods, let's introduce another very simple iterative method called the gauss seidel method. It is very similar to the Jacobi iteration method in terms of we are solving a u equal to b, and we are writing a into the summation of lower diagonal and upper diagonal parts. And therefore, this equation can be rewritten as l plus d, so l u plus d u plus u u equal to b. Now, instead of moving both l and u to the right hand side, we only move u uh, yeah, we only move u to the right hand side so l plus d times u would be equal to b minus u and now we put indices this is k plus one and this is k the value of this splitting is that this iteration would be easy to perform Last time when we are talking about Jacobi iteration, it is easy to perform because the left hand side involves inverting D only. So why is inverting D only easy? It's diagonal, right? So the inversion of D can be computed explicitly. It's just a, another diagonal matrix with the reciprocal of the diagonal entries of D. But this is more complex. This is L plus D, and L plus D is not a diagonal matrix. It is a matrix with what? It is a lower diagonal matrix. And how do we invert a lower diagonal matrix? It's not that easy, right? But it can also be done uh, without having to perform complex manipulation to the matrix. So let's look at what the lower diagonal matrix is. So we only keep the diagonal and lower diagonal parts, etc. Times u1 of k plus 1, u2 of k plus 1. So imagine we are at the kth iteration and the uk is already known. So it is equal to b1 minus uk1 and the right hand side is completely known b2 minus uk2 etc to bn minus ukn. So where should we start in computing this u of k plus 1? Um, question, why isn't it large u? Why are we able to make one? Oh, yeah, sorry. We have a big U here. Yeah, oh. thank you. Yeah, uh, mistake. So so here, we are. Uh, let's see, we already computed the uh, UU. So UU is easy to compute because it's an explicit uh, uh, multiplication, right? So UUK of 1, UUK of 2. So So all of these entries are u times uk at the corresponding uh, row of that vector. Okay, so so now we have the right hand side and we have a lower diagonal matrix. Where should we start? Should we start from the first row or the last row? First row, because the first row is a11 times u1 of k plus 1 equal to a known number. Solving that is easy. We just need to take the reciprocal of a11 multiplied with the first row of the right hand side. We get u1 of k plus 1. Now plug that into the second row. Right? This is called forward elimination. Once we know the first entry, we can use the first entry to figure out a21 a times u1 k plus 1. And therefore, the only unknown in solving the second row is the second entry of the unknown. The first one is already known. The third one, etc., doesn't matter because we have zeros here. And once we solve for the first two entries, we can just get the third entry by using the same procedure. Right? 
So we solve this one by one. This is why gauss seidel iteration is easy to implement. It's because once we have the first, the first entry is easy to get, and once we have the first entry, we get all the subsequent entries pretty easily. So for example, let's see how do we apply this to Poisson's equation. Yeah. So in Poisson's equation, we are solving u of i minus 1 minus u of 2 of ui plus u of i plus 1 divided by delta x squared equal to bi. And uh, we would have a k plus 1 here, k plus 1 here, because this is lower diagonal, and k here, right? As opposed to k both on i minus 1 and i plus 1, we now have k only at i plus 1, the upper diagonal part. And the lower and the diagonal part are now k plus 1. I would argue this is as easy to apply as Jacobi's iteration. This is, this is because when I sweep from the first i to the last i, I have already computed u i minus 1 at the k plus 1 iteration. Now I am supposed to compute u i at k plus 1 iteration. That would be equal to minus delta x over 2 times b i plus the average of u i minus 1 k plus 1. Now this is the only difference from Jacobi equation u of i plus 1 k. So this is actually, this is the only difference, and this is the value I just have computed, right, in my previous i. So instead of using the old u i minus 1, the value from the last entire iteration, I use the value at the current iteration I just have computed. Okay, so the major difference between Jacobi iteration and the gauss seidel iteration is uh, the major difference is I can't now apply this in parallel because I have to compute all the i's in serial. I have to rely on my previous i to get the current i. While Jacobi iteration is very easy to parallelize. Okay, so in the two-dimensional case, it's equally easy. In the two-dimensional case, I would be have u of i j at k plus 1 would be equal to delta x squared over 4 minus b i j, right? And here I would be having something over 4 of u i minus 1 j. Okay, should this be k plus 1 or k? Is this something I already have or I don't have? Right, I have multiple terms. I also have u i plus 1 j. u i j minus 1, u i j minus uh, j plus 1, right? So this is, if I remove the superscripts, this would be the Poisson's equation. So now I need to put superscript on all of these. In Jacobi iteration, I basically put k plus 1 on everything I already computed and k on everything I have not computed. So if I go from uh, smaller i to bigger i and smaller j to bigger j, what are the terms that I should put as k plus 1? Yes, all the minus 1s is something I already computed. While well, this term is something I haven't computed, this is what I have computed, this is something I have not computed, right? So this would be how we apply Jacobi iteration, uh, Gauss-Seidel iteration to a 2D Poisson's equation.